It's no secret that early access has become quite a polarizing concept since Steam launched it in 2013 after Minecraft showed the world that people are willing to buy unfinished games. And there's a good reason for this, because for every successful early access title, there's many more that just fail for one reason or another. I've been playing and watching and talking about early access games since Steam started the initiative, so I decided to think about what some developers do wrong and why early access gets such a bad rap. Keep in mind, this list is purely my opinion and excludes abandoning the game altogether, as well as developers becoming their own worst PR nightmare. So enough introduction, here's my list of the top three sins of early access in no particular order. First, releasing too early or a lack of polish. Now, don't misunderstand me. One of the biggest reasons to release in early access is to release early, but that's not exactly what I mean. When I buy into an early access game, I expect bugs to exist and I expect features to be missing. I expect art to be rough, I expect the game to be a bit unbalanced. Maybe there's some crashes and maybe some unexpected frame drops, but in spite of all that, I expect to enjoy the game. All these things are expected, but there's a point where it just becomes too much. It's hard to enjoy the game if the UI is buggy and frustrating, or if the animations are so unpolished that you're not even sure why you're getting hurt or even if the game's balance is so skewed towards the incredibly difficult that you feel like you're never making any progress. Like I mentioned, I expect all of these aspects to be rough, but there's a limit. If one or more of these things are too rough, the game gets very unenjoyable very fast. This is probably the fastest way to ensure that gamers forget about the game, or worse, skip over it entirely due to unfavorable reviews. A lot of the time, this can just be simply avoided by taking a bit more time to clean things up or make sure that the game is currently enjoyable before putting it out there. This may seem like a point that's completely counterintuitive to the entire idea of early access, but in the end, people are still paying money for the game. Players deserve a positive experience no matter how early in development a game is. For a great example of a developer doing this correctly, just look back at Minecraft when it launched, or Slime Rancher today. Second, a lack of updates. Since early access games are incomplete by their very nature, one of the more interesting draws for a player to buy into an early access title is to watch the game grow. Sometimes though, this isn't the case. Occasionally a developer will drop a game onto early access and disappear, only to re-emerge months later with an update. This is another way to make sure people forget about the game. Being in the software field myself, I know it's a hard and time-consuming vocation. Many indie developers in early access are just hobbyist developers themselves, which means that they have full-time jobs elsewhere. Those who are working full-time may also be a one-man team, which of course means splitting valuable time between all of the different and varied areas of software development. Because of these reasons, it can be hard for these indies to update the game as often as players would like. But there is a way that I've seen developers placate their players when that happens. Blog posts and news updates. Of course, this isn't a perfect solution, but we don't live in a perfect world. Blog posts and just official communication in general send a message to the players that the game is being worked on and progress is being made, and it keeps them excited for future patches. Even maintaining an open dialogue through forums or social media can go a long way towards keeping players interested and the game relevant. And finally, not listening to the players. Early access gives developers a few things. First, the money players pay for the game help motivate and fund development. Second, there's now a battalion of testers who are invested in the future of the game. And third, developers are able to get valuable feedback on what's fun and what's not. This is easily one of the most important features of early access for developers, as it allows them to either pivot or tweak things to make the game better. Pivoting, by the way, is a term used in software development that is defined by changing your plan and coming up with new ideas to replace what isn't working. However, don't take that to mean that developers should just drop the whole idea of a game and start anew, because at that point the delivered product isn't what the customers bought, and it can have a very negative impact on the way players see the game. Features here and there may need to be changed, and smart developers know to listen to the people who play the game and figure out what those features are. Changing features is pretty drastic, but even tweaks to the balance and mechanics of the game can be driven by player feedback, 
and it sucks to watch a developer become blinded by their own vision and ignore the players. There is a danger here, though. On the opposite end of the spectrum is listening too much to the players, so that the game ends up being skewed towards the vision of the vocal minority. This could lead the game down a path where the experience for new players is worse, while the vocal minority, who have become experts at the game over time, get exactly what they want. There's a fine balance that needs to be struck here, but it begs the question, how much is too much before it becomes simply pandering? That's my list! If there's something that early access developers do that you hate, please let me know in the comments section below. And let me know if you like this video by hitting that like button, and if you want to see more stuff like this from me in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, or if you want to see more stuff like this from me now, because you're impatient or something, I don't know, I'm not judging, but you can click on this conveniently placed link to my top 5 roguelite games. And I will see you next time!